On behalf of Bishop Mary and Buddy, Dean Hollerith and the Washington National Cathedral, welcome to our multi-faith service in honor of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. I'm the Reverend Melanie Mullen of the Episcopal Church, and we are grateful to all of our partnering organizations, and to all those who are gathered with us today. During this service, we will honor the Earth and lament the harm done to her and all the living creatures, as well as commit to healing one another and our planet. Our hearts are heavy as we are unable to be with one another in person, but we hold in our hearts all those impacted by this pandemic, as well as all those who risk their safety so that we may have food, medical care, and other necessities. Thank you, Reverend Melanie. I'll say welcome to, welcome to an extraordinary online sanctuary that extends far beyond the grounds of this cathedral. I'm Joelle Novi, and I direct the local affiliate of Interfaith Power and Light, one of a national network of faith communities working together to respond to climate change. People often describe online gatherings as virtual, as if they aren't fully real. So let me be clear, this is real. We are real people here on this specific planet on the 50th Earth Day. We are really interdependent with each other and with the natural world. Our pollution is really trapping heat, damaging our global climate and causing real harm. And so all of us are called to protect and to restore. This is the central reality we face. We'll receive numerous offerings today, fruit rooted in many traditions. May the words of all our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be real and received in love. Amen. We begin with a thanksgiving for the land from Piscataway Women. Greetings, my name is Gabrielle Tayak and I'm here with my daughter, Jancy Quay Medina Tayak. We are women of the Piscataway people, the indigenous people of the Maryland and DC area. And we're here to bring us together in a sense of thanks for this ancestral land that held us and cared for us so long and in the footsteps of our ancestors who are still holding us up even in these times of tremendous uncertainty. So as we celebrate our Earth this day, we need to remember the people who were originally here and who have been protecting it for generations, which is indigenous people. And although we are in a time of great uncertainty um, and it's really scary for most of us, we need to keep indigenous people in mind and also other marginalized communities who are not only dealing with the climate crisis, but also um, facing a lack of health care and other resources that some of us are very lucky to have. Thank you. We begin our gathering together by honoring the earth and all her living creatures. We are not only a human family, but a family that includes all interconnected life as expressed in this prayer adapted from the earth charter. Creating God, 
In you, everything and in the heavens is bound together in perfect harmony. If we lose the sweetness of the waters, we lose the life of the land. If we lose the life of the land, we lose the majesty of the forests. If we lose the majesty of the forests, we lose the purity of the air. And if we lose the purity of the air, we lose the creatures of the earth. Open our eyes to behold your creation. Amen. We will now receive video offerings celebrating the bounty of creation from our partners in the Latter-day Saints, Sikh, Christian, and Hindu traditions. First, a beautiful video called Our Earth, shared by LDS Earth Stewardship, followed by teachings from Echo Sikh then the Young Evangelicals for Climate Action, and a message and prayers from the Bumi Project. Our Earth, the place in which we live, where every human is born, where every life is lived, where every emotion is felt, and where every circumstance is experienced. Earth is our home. The Earth is much more than mere matter, much more than a thing to consume. The state of the human soul and the environment are interconnected, with each affecting and influencing the other. It is intended to be pleasing, to enliven our minds and our spirits. We depend on its bounty. When the earth thrives, we thrive too. Our responsibility is to take care of and cherish our home. We are stewards, not owners. The beauty of God's creations is a gift to humankind. And if we preserve these special places in their unspoiled state, they will silently eloquently witness of our God and inspire us onward and upward. Hello everyone. Guru Nanak, the founder of the Sikh faith, 550 years ago, gave a beautiful thought which is repeated by millions of Sikhs all around the world. And here is the hymn. Pavan Guru Pani Pita Mata Tarit Mahat Devas Rat Doe Dai Daya Kele Sagal Jagat Mata Tarit Mahat. So Guru Nanak, in this hymn, he is inviting us to really form a harmonious relationship with nature, with everything, with all the gifts of nature. First one is Pavan Guru. He says the air is, should be treated as, as a teacher. Teacher gives opportunity to every student and air gives us the opportunity to experience life we are alive because we we can breathe water is the father because life started from water and the next is mother earth that they are all here to really give you the opportunity to experience life and connect yourself with your creator but things have gone wrong what what we have done to this earth what we have done to our air and to water Everything is polluted. Everything is damaged so badly that our future generations will suffer because of our actions. As we are trying to celebrate the Earth Day and also reflecting on the crisis that is surrounding all of us, so many people have lost their lives. So many lives have been devastated. It will take years for us to rebuild you know, our lives together. The bigger crisis is surrounding the entire world is the climate change, the climate crisis. So may, may God bless each one of us, all the faith leaders and all the faith communities so we can all work together 
to save Mother Earth from uh, climate crisis and climate change in the years to come. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Melody with Young Evangelicals for Climate Action, and I will be sharing from Psalm 65, 7 through 10. It is you who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. Reading this passage is a balm for my soul in these anxious times. It's a comforting reminder that God made a covenant promise with us and with the rest of creation that will not be forgotten. The verse says that it is God who stills the roaring of the seas and the tumult of the people. So our mighty God still has power and offers us the peace that comes from remembering his unwavering commitment to life. It is God who visits the earth, waters it, greatly enriches it. The river of God is full of water. And though sickness and death is not of God, all healing and all goodness comes from God. His work is so careful and so life-giving. Even when we contemplate a single living thing, we see that it is God's doing. We see the beauty, the diversity, the majesty. We know that God desires for all of the creatures under his hand to live abundantly. Lord God, we made vows to you and you made a covenant promise that you would protect us. May we be renewed and restored, resting in your wondrous creation and in your promise to us. Amen. It's a real pleasure to be with all of you today and be able to share a Hindu prayer and reflection. Om Kam Vayam Agnim Salilam Mahim Cha Jyotim Smi Sattvani Dishadurmadin Sarit Samudram Cha Hare Shariram Yatkim Cha Bhutam Pranamedanaya A devotee should not see anything as being separate from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Ether and fire, air, water, earth, the sun and other luminaries, all living beings, the directions, trees and other plants, the rivers and oceans. Whatever a devotee experiences, he should consider to be an expansion of Krishna. Thus seeing everything that exists within creation as the body of the Supreme Lord, the devotee should offer his sincere respects to the entire expansion of the Lord's body. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, in his explanation of this passage, says that the world is a reflection of our consciousness. It's often said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And so therefore this text is encouraging us to develop a God consciousness or a Krishna consciousness so that we can move away from exploiting the natural world for our own greed and selfish desires and motivations, but instead treat the world and all life with love love respect and compassion, with the understanding that all life is interconnected, all life is sacred, and all life is an expansion of the Supreme Lord. First, Namaste. First, a prayer to Lord Ganesha. Before Hindus start any journey, we humbly seek the blessings of Lord Ganesha, the remover of obstacles. Om Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha, Nirvignam Kuru Medeva, Sarva Kariyeshu Sarvada. O Lord Ganesha, whose curved trunk and massive body, the one whose splendor is that of a million suns, please bless us so that I do not face any obstacles during my journey. Next, a prayer to Matrabhumi. Samudravasane Devi, Parvatastana Mandite, 
Vishnupatni Namastopyam Padasvarsham Shamavame. Salutations to the divine wife of Lord Vishnu, who is clothed by the oceans and adorned prettily by the mountains. Pardon me, Mother, for setting my foot on you. Each section of this service will end with a prayer. I invite you now to join me as we pray. All humankind is one vast family. This world, our home. We sleep beneath one roof, the starry sky. We warm ourselves before one hearth, the blazing sun. Upon one soil, we stand and breathe one air and drink one water and walk the night beneath one luminescent moon. The children of the universe are we, family of one blood, members in one worldwide family, this earth our home. My family celebrated Passover last week, as did Jewish communities around the world. At the conclusion of communal meals on holidays and on Shabbat, we sing Psalm 126, including this beautiful promise, Hazorim Bedima Berina Yitzoru, that those who sow, who plant in tears, will by the time of harvest be able to reap in joy. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Over the years, I've come to think of that first part, walking the barren fields, giving time and attention to our grief, literally planting our tears in the earth, row after row, as a necessary process for finding our way through to new life and growth and even joy. Why do so many of us turn away from the reality of what is happening to our climate? I think sometimes for myself, avoiding climate science is not about the data at all. I am bracing against grief. The facts are real and heartbreaking. 97% of scientists agree, and seven in 10 Americans now understand that our burning fossil fuels is pouring heat trapping climate pollution into our atmosphere, causing our earth to warm, and the warming is occurring faster and faster. That warming is already causing human suffering and losses in our natural world, which will intensify in the coming years. In this section of our service, we'll recall that our faith traditions and nature itself offer us assurance that the only way forward is through our tears, through the expression and cultivation of our grief. In a moment, we'll bear witness by hearing the global average temperature played on cello, one note for each year, in a piece composed by Daniel Crawford. Please incline your hearts and heads as we hear in music what is happening to our Earth's global average temperature. As you listen, think about the people, places, and creatures you love who may come to harm as temperatures rise.
But the psalm assures us, those who sow in tears will reap in joy. So we plant together. Our next offerings come to us from partners in the Christian and Muslim traditions, from the Center for Spirituality in Nature, the Islamic Society of North America's Green Initiative Team, and from Green Faith. Hi, I'm Beth Norcross. I direct the Center for Spirituality and Nature. I'm out here in the Blue Ridge Mountains reflecting on this 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And as I do, it, I can't help but get swept away by the beauty out here of the spring that's emerging, the blossoms and the flowers and the buds and so forth. But underlying that, I also feel some anxiety and some sadness because the tulip poplars and oaks and maples that you see behind me are not quite supposed to be out yet. They should have waited a few more weeks. And I'm aware of this change that we're bringing to our climate and the impacts that it's having, not just on us, but on all of God's beloved creation. So what do we do with these feelings of anxiety and grief, brokenheartedness for our planet and ourselves? Well, I think about that tradition within the Hebrew Bible of lament. No one did this better than the prophet Jeremiah. In the midst of, of calamity in Judea, when the Babylonians were attacking Jerusalem, tearing down the temple, and taking people away to a faraway land, Jeremiah said this. He says, how long will the land mourn? and the grass of every field wither. For the wickedness of those who live in it, the animals and the birds are swept away. Jeremiah grieves with the land, and so can we. We can bring our feelings of anxiety and fear and anger and grief and, and complicity, all of that, we can bring that to God with the land as Jeremiah did. And yet that wasn't the end of the story for Jeremiah, was it? He bought that field, do you remember, that God instructed him, saying, everything is possible with me, Jeremiah. It wasn't the end of the story for the Hebrews as they came back to, from Babylon to Jerusalem. And it doesn't have to be the end of our story either, does it? We can come back to this land chastened and humbled and trusting and having faith in God's ability to renew us and renew this land. Corruption has appeared throughout the land and sea by reason of what the hands of people have earned so he may let them taste part of the consequence of what they have done, that perhaps they will return to righteousness. The Holy Quran, Surah ar rum chapter 30, verse 41. The Holy Quran clearly states that there will be a corruption of the physical earth, and this corruption will be done by the hands of the corrupted humans. The verse is a very clear warning from God that climate change will occur, and it did. The land and the sea are filled with such corruption. When we ask, why did it occur? Climate change, the corruption of the land and sea is a direct result of the corruption of our behaviors and lifestyles, our companies and governments that choose profit and power over caring for the environment and who live in it. When people make decision that polluting the air or deforesting a forest is worth the risk because it means a profit, the earth suffers. So, how can we be among those who are responsible for the corruption of the earth? Today, 
we have a chance to undo what has happened. If we acknowledge the cause of climate change, all of us. In the Islamic tradition, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said, the earth is green and beautiful, and God has appointed you his stewards over it. Thus, it is our duty to protect the earth and to prevent climate change. We can no longer stand by idly. This is the time for us to take actions. Assalamu alaikum, peace and blessing be upon you. Hi, my name is Angelica Gonzalez Apple. I am the program manager in North America for the global Catholic climate movement. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me. I was ill and you comforted me, in prison and you came to visit me. The truth is, every time you did this for the least of my sisters or brothers, you did it for me. Matthew 25, 35 through 40, Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how awesome is your name through all the earth. You have set your majesty above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have drawn a defense against your foes to silence the enemy and avenger. When I see your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars that you have set in place, what are humans that you are mindful of them? Mere mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them little less than a god, crowded them with glory and honor. You have given them rule over the works of your hands, put all things at their feet, the sheep and the oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever swims the path of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how awesome is your name through all the earth. Laudato Si 139. When we speak of the environment, what we really mean is a relationship existing between nature and the society which it lives in. Nature cannot be regarded as something separate from ourselves or as a mere setting in which we live. We are part of nature, included in it, and thus in constant interaction with it. We are faced not with two separate crises, one environmental and the other social, but rather with one complex crisis, which is both social and environmental. No, prophecy, science, we were warned. We were told about superbugs, mutating viruses, possible pandemics. President Obama actually formed a pandemic task force made up of experts who had worked with SARS and MERS and with the Ebola crisis. We know, we know, we see what the disruption and destruction of our whole creation has brought. We see the intensified hurricanes, the extreme heat, the droughts, the wildfires, the extreme flooding. We know what has gone on. We know right up to this present time with the current COVID-19 virus raging across our planet. We know. Birthing a new economy based not on fossil fuels but clean renewable energy birthing a new world that's based on justice and equity we know that we can see a new heaven and a new earth which can be actualized by our vision by our faith which allows us to touch the intangible hear the inaudible and see the unperceivable by our faith We've done it before. We can do it again. We know.
We sow our tears in lament over the destruction of creation with this prayer. Please join me. All humankind is one vast family, this world, our home. We acknowledge the damage to our roof, the starry sky. We recognize the rising heat which harms our seas, our plains, our forests, and the life therein. We lament the painful consequences of our choices on the sacred soil and air and water. The children of the universe are we, family of one blood, who bear responsibility for the hurt we cause each other and to this earth, our home. In honor of Earth Day, we invite you to join us in this covenant to care for creation. And if you've already made a commitment to reaffirm that commitment, the covenant reads, in Jesus, God so loved the world. We follow Jesus, so we love the world God loves. Concerned about the global climate emergency, drawing from a range of approaches for our diverse context, we commit to form and restore loving, liberating, life-giving relationships with all of God's creation. Loving formation. For God's sake, we will grow our love for the earth and all of life through preaching, teaching, storytelling, and prayer. Liberating advocacy. For God's sake, standing alongside marginalized, vulnerable peoples, we will advocate and act to repair creation and seek the liberation and flourishing of all people. Life-giving conservation. For God's sake, we will adopt practical ways of reducing our climate impact and living more humbly and gently on earth as individuals, households, congregations, institutions, and dioceses. This Earth Day, we invite you to visit the creation care pages of the Episcopal Church, but more importantly, we invite you to make this or a similar commitment to follow in the way of Jesus, in the way of God's love, and care for the very world that God loves. God love you. God bless you. And may God hold us all in this entire creation in those almighty hands of love. We now receive invitations to gather together to protect and restore creation. From our partners in the Buddhist, Jewish, Unitarian Universalist, and Christian traditions. Sharing messages from One Earth Sangha, Dayenu, the Unitarian Universalist Ministry for Earth, and the Unitarian Universalist Association, and from Creation Justice Ministries. After the videos, please join us in song. Time. With relentless harvesting, your precious human life is short. All is as in life gathers proof of our faith through the pilgrimage of the night that tests the ground of our being so that we may know the measure of our courage and the wellspring of our heart from which we sip nectar. Just as the brown striped bug drinks from the white elderflower and the orange thin-winged butterfly skips through ochre grasses and the grey knowing wolves move through cold white snow and the rhinos through dry bush felt go. As lions stalk impala along the river slow, slow is the earth's rhythm, deep and unfathomable in our collective soul the rhythm of the day's tick-tock winding through the web of our connection of internet consumption, where we search what we hope to know. Because to truly know is not to know, and to not know is as much evidence as where faith can go. It is like 
a great regal tree growing in the rocks and sand of barren wilderness. When the roots get water, the branches, leaves, flowers and fruits will all flourish. The regal tree of enlightenment growing in the wilderness of birth and death is the same. All living beings are its roots. All Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are its flowers and fruits. By serving all beings, by serving this great earth, by pouring the water of living, gentle and fierce compassion together, we will embody the flowers and fruits of our true awakening. And even when the realms of empty space are exhausted and the realms of living beings are exhausted, commas of living beings are exhausted, and the afflictions of living beings are exhausted, we will still accord with this, our deepest heart, endlessly, continuously, in thought after thought without cease, our body, speech and mind never weary of this service. So says our true heart, gate, gate, para gate, para sangate, bodhisvaha. We are living in such a dark and frightening time in human history. Some may say it is unprecedented, and yet there have been other times. Many of our peoples have lived through threat of annihilation. The Jewish community just celebrated Passover, the story at the core of our people's narrative, the journey out of its Rhine, Egypt, or literally a narrow place, a place of oppression and genocide, like so many peoples have faced. While wandering in the desert, God reminds us that the path forward and our redemption is not in the heavens or beyond our reach. Loba Shemayinhi. Our redemption is in our hands. Biyadenu. In Deuteronomy, God says, Surely this injunction which I enjoin you this day is not too baffling for you, nor is it beyond your reach. It is not in the heavens. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who among us can cross to the other side of the sea and get it for us? No, the thing is very close to you, in your mouth and in your heart to do it. And making clear just how high the stakes are, God goes on to say, I set before you this day life and prosperity, death and adversity. I have put before you life and death, blessing and curse. Choose life so you and your offspring will live. In the face of the climate crisis, I find myself thinking about this passage a lot, turning it over and over and gathering strength. Lo bashamayimhi, it is not in heaven or beyond our reach. It is in our hearts and in our hands, and we can do it. When I was a child growing up in the 70s, we used to sing the song, he's got the whole world in his hands. Some of you may remember it. We'd sing it over and over again with gusto. And I remember feeling a sense of comfort It was a reassuring proclamation as if to say, God's got us. We are okay. But we are really not okay. God is with us. And the future of the world is in our hands. The Yadenu, in our hands as in it is on us. And also it is in our hands. We have the capacity. We have the science. We have the resources. We have the people and we have the power. As we celebrate Earth Day this year, let us remember this. God is accompanying us and it is in our hands and in our hearts and we can do it. Let us choose life so we and our offspring may live. So on Monday, um, I was on a call with people from 17 countries as the only North American representative. Um, And on that call, the thing that struck me the most, which is a deep theological question, is the theological question around, do we honor each other's humanity? Do we honor what the earth is for us, both as a guider, a teacher, a nurturer, a protector, like the earth as like us, right? Like we are not separate. And what it means for us to be in this time where we are facing one of the largest pandemics of our ever. And for my generation, it is the only thing that has actually touched everybody. And so we're in a moment where we have to reflect on who matters 
right? Like, do we actually believe that all of us matter? Do we believe that the people who are like literally being destroyed by mining matter? Do we believe that everyone has the right to clean water? Because if we truly believe that every living creature is worthy and that we are also worthy, then how we move with the earth, her resources, how we move with ourselves will be entirely different. So I guess, Alandria, the, that was so beautiful. And the only thing that's coming to my heart to add is just um, an expression of deep love and solidarity for the youth who are seeing what's needed and really connecting to that spirit and um, inspiring all of us, you know, just really um, creating hope when there was no hope for so many people and having mm -hmm. energy and, and faith and determination in a way that, um, that is so deeply needed. Hi, I'm Shantha Reddy Alonzo, Executive Director of Creation Justice Ministries. I'd like to talk with you today about time and urgency. The Creation Justice community is honoring Earth Day Sunday with the theme of Martin Luther King's sermon on the fierce urgency of now. The time is now to address our climate emergency. In the time of COVID-19 though, this fierce urgency of now theme feels paradoxical. On the one hand, we feel stuck we can't go anywhere. On the other hand, COVID-19 is exposing imbalances in God's creation, inequities in our communities, and the urgent need to interrupt business as usual. Unless we end environmental racism with a fierce urgency, communities of color will disproportionately bear the burden of diseases like COVID-19 that prey upon bodies that have borne a lifelong unequal burden of pollution. It is clear diseases like coronavirus will become more common unless we protect diversity of our species with a fierce urgency. Proposals such as conserving 30% of nature by 2030 once seemed idealistic to many. Now, more of us understand that protecting nature is part of our own survival as well. Now, while much is shut down, old systems are being broken open and perhaps in that opening, a divine inbreaking can happen a kairos moment for God's creation. In the New Testament, the Greek word kairos means time, but this sense of time is different than the passing of minutes, which the Greeks call chronos. In the Gospel of John, the sense of the Greek word kairos relates to the coming of Jesus in the fullness of time, with the right actions coming at the right time. As Christians, we are celebrating the Easter season. Embracing Easter joy means living in gratitude for the saving action of Jesus in our world, and listening for our call to participate in God's mission to renew the earth. May we find ways to participate in this Kairos moment for God's creation and the divine inbreaking into our broken world. Bless God for this beautiful land that he's given us. The tide is rising and so are we. Won't you put your hands together? A simple clap of praise. The tide is rising. The tide is rising, and so are we. The tide is rising, and so are we. The tide is rising, and so are we. This is where we are called to be. This is where we are called to be. is mighty and so are we the task is mighty and so are we the task is mighty and so are we this is where we are called to be this is where we are called to be the world is ready and so are the world is ready, and so are we. The world is ready, and so are we. This is where we are called to be. 
this is where we are called to be. Sing with us. The tide is rising. The tide is rising. And so are and we. And so are we. The tide is rising. The tide is rising. And so are we. The tide is rising. And so are we. This is where. This is where we are called to be. This is where we are called to be. Hello, I'm Reverend Susan Hendershot, President of Interfaith Power and Light. All God's children got a place in the choir, affirms the folk song. On this 50th Earth Day, we affirm the sacred importance of every component of God's living creation. And we offer teachings today from the diversity of humanity's sacred traditions. In this moment of climate crisis, we are each called to help choose leaders who reflect our values around justice and creation care. A democracy promises each our place in the choir and assures us that we all can have our voices heard through voting in elections. But in this time of pandemic, we are also called to protect our neighbors by supporting them in staying safe at home. As our offering today, please take a moment right now to speak out to your senators for vote by mail legislation that would ensure that everyone, all of our neighbors gathered near and far, can safely have their voices heard in this November's election. Those who live in the vicinity of the Washington National Cathedral here in Washington, D.C. don't have representation in the U.S. Senate. But everyone else listening to my voice today across the United States can speak out to your senators to ensure that all of our neighbors can safely have their voices heard in this November's election. If you're watching today on the cathedral.org slash Earth Day website, you'll see the link to take action below. Or if you're watching on Facebook, you'll see the link in the event description. Please join me in taking action online as the music begins. Thank you.
Please join me in prayer as we conclude today's offering. All humankind is one vast family, this world our home. We pledge our care to all the life beneath one roof, the starry sky. We honor all who seek the warmth of blazing sun. We will remember that upon one soil we stand and breathe one air and drink one water and walk the night beneath one luminescent moon. All children of the universe are we, creatures of the land and sea and air, all life that lives upon, within this earth, our home. Amen. We now welcome a few words from a member of the Laguna Pueblo and Omaha tribes and a prayer for peace from the Bumi Project. Wibnaha, thank you. Undan, wangite, yatite. It is good that you are here and online. Ijaje la thoisa, wahe ie Mary Phillips. We have not had to all our participants as we come together in song and prayer in hopes that our spirits are unified to overcome all that we face. We ask that during this time, we continue to honor, lament, and commit to Mother Earth. Let us be mindful of our traditions, sacred places, and cultural wisdom, which connects us to our world and all peoples. Let us continue to consult the indigenous and non-indigenous voices that lead in the stewardship of our natural resources and ecological environments. And pray that Wakanda creator, that Ethe will have pity on us. And pray for our leaders, both entitled and gifted by the people, so that their spirits are led by the rhythm of the land and the heartbeats of our nations and tribes. Today, I will burn Dakota and California sage and cedar to send prayers to the four directions. To the east, prayers for wisdom each day as the sun rises on Mother Earth. To the south, prayers for renewal, Wakanda has provided and to grow and learn so that we do not cause further harm or ignore the cry of all living creatures. To the west, prayers for the sacred knee, water of life, to preserve life through its purity. And to the north, for the wind to carry these prayers for the Wawe, Noni, those willing to help each other. Mi e tinge, be well, and may every day be Earth Day. Finally, a prayer for peace. Om Daya Shanti, Antariksham Shanti, Prithvi Shanti, Apa Shanti, Osadaya Shanti, Panaspataya Shanti, Vishwadeva Shanti, Brahma Shanti, Sarvam Shanti, Shanti Reva Shanti, Samasta Shanti, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. May peace radiate in the whole sky as well as in the vast ethereal space everywhere. May peace reign in all over the earth, water, herbs, trees, and creepers. May peace flow over the whole universe. May peace be in the supreme being Brahman. And may there always exist peace and peace alone. Om, peace, peace, peace to us all beings. Thank you again for joining us today. We wish you a blessed Earth Day. Go this week in love and hope, knowing that you are bound together, continuing to be held with love to one another, the spirit, and this good Earth. Now please join us as we sing together one more time. is holy and so are we our land is holy and so are we our land is holy and so are we this is where we are called to be this is where we are called to be the world is ready the world is ready and so are we and so are Oh!